can everyone hear me? Yep, awesome. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kea. I uh, work at ThoughtWorks as a senior consultant developer. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, animation in DOM, uh, AKA web animation. Um, so we will talk about some development tools and techniques around animation. Uh, we'll also talk about some design patterns uh, around like how to um, design a good animation. But before I jump into any of those things, I want to talk about, first of all, why, uh, why I want to explain about the animation at all. I am not an animator um, by trade um, or anything, uh, but basically um, I've always been fascinated by animation, how those clever little techniques around animation can actually bring illusion to life on any medium that we are we're using it. So um, I think we should embrace um, animation in web too, uh, because it, it's not just a look and feel thing, it actually can have a real purpose. Um, so, uh, but unfortunately, that, that's always not a popular opinion every client I go. So, um, People think that, okay, if you have a lot of animation on a website, you would end up with something like this. Um, yeah, 90s and 2000 time where we have, used to have like a lot of like overuse of GIFs or GIFs, whatever it is, um, and everywhere, like annoying parallax uh, animations and those things. Um, so it could, um, but fortunately we moved uh, from 90s and 2000 and we had whole iPhone um, launch happened and then iPhone changed our life. Um, we had like a whole UX movement um, going on. And nowadays we're actually seeing a lot more clever use of animations. Um, example, this one, uh, it's a very popular example of how good animation looks like. This is a Stripe checkout. Um, we must have used it at one point or another. Um, as you can see, if you look at closely, there are a lot of animations happening here. Pretty much every element on this particular form is animated in some way or another. What's the difference here? The difference is not the number of animation that you're doing. The difference is actually that every animation in here has some purpose. Um, like good UI design, good animation are also invisible. So that's the difference here. So in the next section, we'll talk about some good design patterns around uh, animation. So we'll try to find out uh, like identify a places in a web that we can actually use animation that would add um, purpose um, to what we are doing and add some like I improve the user experience. Um, so if you look at the web closely with a lot of website, you start seeing some patterns. Uh, these patterns are actually very helpful in identifying where we can actually use animation. So we'll look at some very common one that we are seeing today a lot. Uh, the first one is the navigational transition or gen general transitional animations, um, like your carousel here, or you can have like a uh, page transitions, which is also a kind of like transitional animation. You can not have an animation here, that's fine. It will work perfectly. The difference is like if you don't have an animation here, that means it's the user who has to now um, work it out that if I want to go right or if I want to go left uh, for going next or previous. So it adds an extra cognitive load in your brain and we can use animation to actually reduce that cognitive load for user. So that's transitional animation. The next ones are supplemental. Supplemental animation, so transition takes you from one place to another on an information sta space, or they take you out from like one task to another. Supplemental animation doesn't take you anywhere. What they do is they basically adds information to a page or removes the information to a page. So all our drop down boxes, our um, pop up, um, even the drop, um, the, annoying uh, ad, ad, ad block, they all actually kind of um, um, supplement the animation. They add information to the page ad hocly. Um, then you have a visual feedback. feedback. This is another very, very common use case of animation. Um, animation can be used to give a direct feedback to a user's inter interaction. So like your depress button, or, or even like a loading animation, like a preloader that you are using. That is also a feedback animation that can actually give you, give a user a feedback that system is busy doing something, wait for it. So that's also feedback. Uh, and we are using animation for that nowadays. So, and the next one is demonstration or visual hint. This is very good, this is where, like where it's like playing begins because you can play with a lot of things here. Uh, so demonstrations are the one which, which can actually use animation to tell a story. Um, you can have a really big blog of, blob of text around like what your product is doing something or how your product works. But instead of that, you can actually use an animation, interactive animation to, to tell a story in a very insightful at, at, as well as entertaining way. So that's demonstration or a visual hint kind of animation. Then we have, the last one is like pretty decorative animation. Uh, so these animations are there for no reason. They, 
they're there just, just for fun. Um, and obviously, we should be very um, mindful of using this kind of animation. We can't have a lot of uh, animation which doesn't have a purpose. But in saying that, decorative animation can have their purpose as well. Um, decorative animation can be used to enforce branding, or it could use to and um, some, sometimes make something ordinary into extraordinary. Um, so that's like decorative an, uh, animation. These are some very common, but obviously there, there are a lot more patterns if you like start seeing the web with where, where we can use animation. So identifying where to use animation is only half of the story. In order to basically make a good animation, it takes a whole team. So that's why like, a designer can come up with an amazing um, animation design, but at the end of the day, you need to develop and m put it in a production. So I think the communication aspect of an animation is as important. As a developer, why should I care about animation at all, like or com communicating animation? Because if you know what goes into designing it, you can ask the right questions at the right time, rather than someone deliver you an animation and just make it like this PSD. That it, it doesn't work. So that's why when we are communicating or defining an animation, there are certain things we should keep it in mind. Let's say if you want to define an animation, there are three things you should be at least asking. The first and obvious one is a trigger. Uh, obviously, but what starts it? Is it actually happen on the page load? Does it happen on click of the button? So obviously, that's one of the definition. The next one is actual action. Obviously. And again, like what happens? Like when something fades, something moves. Um, just in a description of verbal, but what what the action is. And the last one, which is a quality. So this is often forgotten, but it's very important to get the qualities right because with the right quality is answered. You can actually create a really smooth, lifelike animation. So these are all actually the quality to actually find out like how, how good animations go. Isn't it a little bit more about qualities? So what are the qualities that you should be asking um, designers about? So obviously there are a lot more. But the first and most important one is easing. So easing, we don't ask that. So easing is basically a rate of change of that something changes over the time. In your CSS world, it's a timing functions. Every browser understands four type of easing. Ease in, accelerate, ease out, decelerate, first decelerate later, and linear, which is no rate of change. So every browser understands these four, and you should be asking which one I should be using. OK, I, I see the animation. Have you uh, ease in or ease out at the end? Um, there is a fifth one called um, like custom easing as well that you can define by a cubic bezier. Um, which is a mathematical formula you can play around with. So there's a website called cubicbezier.com, which can allow you to play with the different kind of thing. But usually in my work, what I've seen, it mainly the four standard ones are, will suffice. Um, so that's, that's easy, uh, important one. The next one is obvious one is the duration, how long uh, the animation lasts. It will be asked like, okay, it's a two second, it's a one second, uh, depending on the frame rate uh, restrictions. And the last one is the properties, which is which CSS properties are getting um, animated. So you can have like any pretty much CSS property right written here. But the note on this one is not all the CSS properties are animatable. And the ones which are animatable, not all of them are as performant on every browser. So you should be very careful of what properties you are actually animating. Most of the time, your safe bet are four properties. Opacity, translate, tran um, scale, and rotate. So the last one are all done through um, transform. So if you, if you, most of like work, you can 80% of the animation we are doing, we can do it with this four thing. And we should be considering them over anything else. So that's the talk about communicating animation and designing animation and all those things. Now let's get into a nitty gritty of how to develop a good animation. So with the development, it's a, it's a really good time to be around. Like, I mean, there are so many options available to de develop uh, really good animations. Um, we start with first, let's say, what's available natively. So one obvious one is CSS. We must have used it at one point or another, um, CSS animation. There are three ways to animate in CSS. Um, animation, transition, and request animation frame. Um, they, they, are, they are your go-to kind of place. Um, it will work on every browser. Uh, you don't need any third-party library. They are very easy to use. Um, they are really hardware accelerated. So it's like if you can do it with the CSS, you should do it with the CSS. The downside of it, it's actually as, as soon as your animation gets complex, it's really hard to maintain. Um, you can't do like motion along the path or chaining a different animation or staggering very easily in CSS. It's, it's just it's extremely hard. So that's the downside. There are other native options available. 
like Canvas. I mean, Canvas can do an amazing thing. So Canvas ninjas out there in the web, they've done an amazing thing with Canvas. Um, but there are downsides of Canvas as well. It's not responsive and it's not um, accessible as well. So when you are considering like, okay, your production ready website, you need to make it responsive, well, Canvas may not be a choice all the time. Um, the other one is WebGL. Uh, which is again like you can do a lot of 3D uh, related cool stuff with WebGL. The problem with WebGL also is underneath it uses, uses Canvas. So it's the same limitation. You actually like can't make it that uh, accessible as well as responsive. Um, so that's, that's the natively available. Obviously we have plethora of options available for third party. So we'll look at some of them. The first and most obvious one is a green sock. GSAP, TweenMax, TweenLite, all of the same name. GreenSock is like a de facto standard library for any animation that you want to do. Like it's been there for a while, like it's 10 years or something like it's been development and it's, it's, a, it's kind of like anything that you want to do on animation, you can do it with GreenSock. It's, it's got that many plugins available. Um, it's, it's very performant um, at the same time, like easy to use, very easy to use. The only downside, it's, a, it's an external dependency and the license, licensing model is a bit funny, so you need to know which license you are using. But it's a third party library, it's a dependency on your project. You have another um, like option like Velocity.js, which is kind of like GreenSock with less bells and whistles. Um, then you have Mo.js, 3.js, very good for 3D animation, and there are a huge number. There are React specific one, like React, uh, React, React is CSS transition group, there's a React motion, a lot of them available. So, but they all have like their plus and minuses. As CSS is very performant, easy to use, not great for complex animation. At the same time, you have GreenSock, which does everything, uh, but it's an external dependency. So, but there is a new upcoming API or a spec that W3C has been working on for some time, and it's called Web Animation API, called WAPI. And uh, the premise for that it is like you'll be able to create an very easily a complex animation in native JavaScript without any third party library, and which gives you the same power of CSS, same hardware accelerated way. So that's, that's the idea behind uh, WAPI. Um, so well, the bigger, biggest question is can we, can we use it? Like, I mean, if it's amazing, well, why can't we use it? Are we ready to use it? Well, WAPI is relatively new. Um, I'll say relatively because it's be, like if the first draft came out in 2012, but as you can see, the browsers are not very um, uh, easy to catch on with, with that. So right now we have a Firefox and Chrome pretty much implemented most of the major feature. Uh, but at the same time, IE Edge and um, Safari are in, still in development. So um, what's the deal here? Well, the good news is that WAPI comes with very comprehensive and very reliable polyfill. So with that polyfill, we can actually start using it, at least play around with it. Or if you want, like in a control environment, you can use it in a production as well. So that's the thing. I mean, the first question would come like, yeah, but with polyfill, why should I care about WAPI? So the thing is like, when, even though browsers right now, um, like from the browser side of thing, it looks like very bleak situation that they are not catching up very fast. Um, but the, the thing is when it will be available, fully supported by all the browsers, this will be the fastest and most sharpest way to actually write an animation in native JavaScript without resorting to something like WebGL. So it's definitely worth looking into it right now or playing around with it, and it's so easy to start. So in the next brief section, I'll look into like few basic um, APIs that we can actually get started using straight away. Um, the first one is called um, element.animate. So if you, want, if you have one, uh, one element and you want to animate that or do anything like any small animation with it, you can actually call an animate method on that element and then you pass the keyframes and you pass the options. Keyframes are your simple um, CSS keyframes, like your options are your qualities, like your easy in all your iterations, all your durations and stuff like that. So you can pass this and that, that's it, that's all you need. Uh, so let's look at the example here. So uh, for my example, I'll be using React. Uh, no specific reason, it's just like React right now is probably one of the most uh, um, widely used um, um, framework for a front end application and uh, at least it dominates my world so <laughs> there it is uh, so i have a react uh, component here it's a simple div and i just want to animate it like rotate it um, so basically all i am doing here is in my component did mount i have um, timing which are options i have a keyframe and i'm getting the element by reference and i'm passing uh, doing uh, calling the dot animate method 
passing the keyframe and timing. And that's all I need. So it's a it, it's simple example of how easy you can get it started. Um, the next one is a keyframe effect. So it's exactly like um, animation, uh, element on animate. Uh, if you want to animate a single anima uh, animate, um, single element, you can call a new keyframe effect rather than element or element, and you pass that element as a first parameter. So that's the only difference. It'll, it'll give you the exact same effect. Once you have the keyframe effect, then you create a new animation object, and you pass that keyframe effect with the timeline, uh, your animation timeline that you want this um, uh, animation to play on. Now, what, what, it's the same thing. What's the difference? So there is a big difference here. Vapi is not just a replacement for CSS animation. It can actually give us a lot more. Now that we have new animation, uh, every time you do new animation, it actually creates an instance of an animation player. And that animation player, you can now store it in a variable. What you can do with it is now you can call a different methods on it. Like you can start, you can stop, you can reverse, you can cancel. There, there are a lot of other callback properties that you can call as well on top of that. So now it's like your video. You have an interactive animation, and you go and click something. It stops or something like that. So it, it, it's actually a lot more than you can't do that easily in CSS. This, this is a power of WAPI. So we look at the, one of the example of this um, different kind of state. If I can find my mouse. OK, so I have an animation here. It's a continuous animation. All I'm doing is just animating a div. And I have a button here. I click on it, and it just pauses. Click on it, it starts again. So it's a simple example. So again, what I've done here is I have a div. And on my component did mount, um, I have this animation um, uh, defined. So I have a new effect, keyframe effect. Then I have a new player. I'm creating a new animation, passing that effect with the current timeline. And I'm just saying player.play. And it'll start playing the animation. When someone clicks on a button on a handle click, all I'm doing is if it is just toggling the state. So either play, uh, if it's playing, just stop playing, or play a pause. So it's, it's that simple to manipulate the state of an animation. So that's an example. Now, so these are all the basic ones that are available straight away on le level one. There's a lot more. Um, it, WAPI is a pretty comprehensive spec, and there's a lot more you can do with it. But with, with just these two, two um, uh, APIs, you can do a lot more as well. There are a uh, couple of other noteworthy APIs that are coming in level two. Uh, first one is a group effect which is worth noting here. Um, so you can still use it today if you want. The only thing is you need another polyfill for that. It's called polyfill next. Um, and it's still under developer. It's experimental. So it may break at some time. So you, you can use it. You can start playing with it. It's no problem with that. The group effect is exactly like a uh, keyframe effect. The only difference is it takes another uh, array of keyframe effect. So what you can do is, like when you say animation.play, all those animation, all those keyframe effect will start playing at the same time. So it's like you can actually play a lot of animation at the same time. And the similar one, next one, is a sequence effect. It's exactly like group effect, but you can, instead of playing all at once, it's going to play it in sequence. So now like, you can do a lot more thing with that. Um, so you can like, sometime a lot of like, um, timeline happening of the animation. You have one animation here, and then it stops and it starts another. You don't need to chain them manually. You can do it all in one shot. So that's a sequence effect. So we, we spoke about like a, a very basic e example of um, how, WAPI and APIs. Um, uh, in the next brief section, I'll um, talk about like some real world like examples uh, that I've created, just how easy it is to actually use it just with element.anime. So first one I have is, is a button here. So it's like a feedback button. So you click on this, and instead of having a loading spinner, it actually has its own loading bar. And then once it's finished, it so shows success. So how would the code look like this? So as you can see, there are, there are four things. First one, when I click the button, the button uh, resizes it to smaller. Then loading bar animation shows. Then it goes back up, third animation. And then success comes in. So that's four animation here. They're happening one by one. So I'm not using sequence effect. I'm, I'll just show you how it is done without that as well um, right now with just element animate. So what I've done is like I have four different keyframes, so four different animation. And then on a handle click, all I'm doing is I'm playing the first animation. Then on, on finish of that animation, I'm just chaining the animation. So you, this is on finish. So you have a callback call on finish as well, which then you can use to chain animations and change the states in between. So it's, it's as simple as that. So next one is an, a loading animation. So it's like just if you have a two balls just rotating, it's showing that something is in the progress. As you can see, there are two animations happening here. 
first one is like a, a blue ball or some, something and it goes into direction. The other animation, the second ball is exactly the same just in a reverse direction. So, it'll, yep, so it will be, um, the code would be simple, um, again, like it's the keyframe and another uh, keyframe and I'm, all I'm doing is element don't animate. The only difference here is the direction of a second uh, um, uh, ball is actually in reverse, that's it. Everything else is same for both. So, yep, and the last one is I have a transition animation here. So you can have a master page kind of uh, um, like a requirement and you can create something like that. Um, so as you can see, on click of it, actually it um, rotates um, the whole page or rotates in um, based on what the sta state is and then it rotates a um, button itself in, in between as well. So the code would be very simple for that as well. So two animations are happening. On a handle click, I'm just going to, based on the state, either rotate, rotate in or rotate out the animation. And then on finish of that, I will just rotate the button as well, the green button a little bit. So again, that's another simple, very simple example of that. So with that, I will wrap up, um, giving you a few references um, to start, uh, like start looking at it. Uh, Mozilla developer documentation is very comprehensive to start with. And these are all few people that I like to follow. Um, Rachel Nabo, like they all um, either involved in um, VAPI spec in some way or another, or some people are re really good at like writing about animation, like Animation at Work book by Rachel Nabors. Rachel Nabor also wrote the documentation on Mozilla Developer. So these are all like people you can start following. There's a lot of uh, discussions around VAPI in, in, in um, nowadays in the web as well. So. With that, I'll finish it off. Like, I'll just, I'm, I'm really excited about like a day where I really don't have to use any third-party library and native JavaScript can give you an as easy way to write a really complex animation. So I hope I've actually inspired some people to start using WAPI or at least animation in our day-to-day -day work. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of minutes for questions. So if anyone has a question for Kaya, now would be the time to share here. No. So no, they come with a very comprehensive polyfill. So there are two levels of polyfill. So the first polyfill, you can actually start using it, which are using it on the like this this um, all these uh, um, the an animation example I've shown is actually I've developed on the website, and it works on pretty much all the browsers. So with the polyfill is actually very uh, stable in a way that they if they make any breaking changes, they make sure that they have the backward compatibility, and they make sure that it's available for three months at, at least. So you get the console error, but you have three months to fix it as well. So I mean, it's, it's, it's very comprehensive and reliable, yeah. Hmm. So underline it actually if with the polyfill, if the browser doesn't support, it actually turns into a CSS. So yes, it is exactly like CSS, uh, but it's just uh, in CSS, if the same thing you want to do, you will be writing like a huge code. If you're, if you're having a performance in CSS, you will have performance here, but because it's exactly the same hardware accelerator, sorry? I see here. So at the end of the day, it actually turns out like it, it uses the j same way the CSS is actually using the GPU. So um, all the third party library won't be able to use, use the GPU. CSS uses this. That's why they're most performant. This is exactly the same thing. So that's the reason why when, when it's available, this will be the most um, performant way. But yeah, uh, you still have to be careful on what, what properties you're animating. You could actually like, um, depends on like if you're doing a huge animation of a page which uh, repaints the whole page like a color changes yeah it would be expensive so yeah thank you